This map showcases the countries to which China more than doubled the value of its electric vehicle exports between 2019 and 2020, while this one illustrates the same for 2020 to 2021 and this one for 2021 to 2022. The impressive nature of China's growth becomes even more evident when compared to a similar map for the United States. As far as EV exports go, China has captured 40% of the market and is likely just getting started. At a major EV auto show in Shanghai, China's leading domestic EV maker, BYD, revealed their Seagull hatchback. With an appealing price of just $11,300 USD, the Seagull received 11,000 orders within 24 hours of pre-sales opening. In 2022, Chinese electric vehicle exports saw a jaw-dropping 131% year-on-year increase, hitting a value of $20.9 billion. The Seagull is yet another example of China's strategic push to use the EV revolution to outpace traditional automakers and become the world's top automobile exporters. The automotive industry's growth has deeply impacted China's economy, fueling job creation, infrastructure development and technological progress. Employing over 7 million people directly and indirectly, making it a crucial source of high-value jobs for China's workforce. Additionally, the industry's growth has attracted investments in infrastructure like roads, highways and EV charging stations, stimulating economic growth and improving the country's transportation network. This has led China to have 78% of the fast public charges in the world, with almost more charges in Beijing than the entire United States. China's drive to lead the EV market is also rooted in a desire to cut down its dependence on massive petrochemical imports from unstable regions like the Persian Gulf and Russia as China is currently the largest importer of petroleum in human history. As China secures a bigger piece of the export market, we're left to wonder, can traditional automakers keep up? Or will the world's reliance on Middle Eastern oil be swapped for dependence on the Middle Kingdom's batteries? Making cars is hard, very hard, which is why only a few countries are able to support a domestic automobile industry. To build cars at scale requires expertise in mechanical, software, electrical, materials, chemical, and industrial engineering. The average internal combustion engine car has around 20,000 to 30,000 parts, including many moving components in the engine, transmission, exhaust system, and cooling system. On the other hand, an electric vehicle typically has significantly fewer parts, with estimates ranging from 7,000 to 15,000 parts. The simplicity of electric drivetrains, which consist of an electric motor, inverter, and battery, significantly reduces the number of moving parts compared to ICE vehicles. The reduction in parts found in electric vehicles can result in lower maintenance costs and enhanced reliability when compared to their internal combustion engine counterparts. This presents an ideal opportunity for rising industrial powers like China to invest in their domestic automobile companies, allowing them to surpass well-established competitors. Reliability is often a top concern for consumers when considering new or lesser-known brands. As electric vehicles are perceived to have a lower risk of breakdowns, this can assuage the concerns of skeptics, particularly in the export market. Historically, the only way for countries without an automobile industry to catch up has been through industrial policy, which involves state intervention to nurture emerging industries. Consider an entrepreneur attempting to raise capital to start a car company in a country with no existing industry. They would need to raise billions of dollars over decades before seeing any profit while competing against established players with decades of experience, reputable brands, and loyal customer bases. The labor force would likely lack the necessary skills and knowledge, and spending billions of dollars would be required before any profit is realized, if ever. No bank or private investor would provide the necessary funds due to the overwhelming risk and uncertainty. This is why a country's first successful domestic automobile manufacturer is typically backed by its government. Companies like Ford, Toyota, Hyundai and Renault would not have been possible without land grants, R&D subsidies, government-backed loans, import restrictions and other protectionist measures. Even Tesla relied on hundreds of millions of dollars in government loans. Now, the most important and expensive part of EV vehicles are the batteries. The Chinese government realized this in the early 2000s, 
and began moving to ensure their firms would have access to the raw materials necessary to scale their battery production. Most battery chemistries are lithium-based, also relying on a mix of cobalt, manganese, nickel and graphite. 85% of lithium comes from three countries, Australia, Chile and China. China's Tianqi Lithium owns a 22.16% stake in Chile's SQM, the world's largest lithium refiner, in addition to a 49% ownership stake in Greenbushes, the world's largest lithium mine. There are also mines within China itself, such as the Jejika project, which produces almost 50,000 tons of lithium a year. Supply chains for lithium-free sodium ion batteries are also being established, with over 100 gigawatt hours of manufacturing capacity either currently operating or announced, almost all in China. Cobalt is almost exclusively sourced from the Democratic Republic of Congo. China secured nearly exclusive access via the Sino-Congolese des Mines, better known as the Sikomines. This so-called deal of the century has led to China producing 80% of the world's cobalt. This deal wasn't without its controversy. Mining in the DRC can sometimes take place under horrific conditions and can be terrible for the environment. The unease with the ethical implications of using cobalt in China's quasi-monopoly on the conflict material has led to the development of alternative battery chemistries that don't require cobalt for the cathode, such as lithium iron phosphate or lithium manganese oxide. However, these chemistries have their downsides, such as lower energy density and worse weather performance. Nevertheless, nearly 20% of electric vehicles sold employ LFP chemistry, predominantly from cattle and BYD, two leading Chinese companies that rank among the world's top suppliers of EV batteries, with a combined market share of 60%. Recently, Cattle has claimed that it has discovered a new battery chemistry that almost doubles the energy density of any other battery being manufactured at scale. Details are sparse, and the first application will reportedly be in electric aviation, not cars. But if the performance gains are anywhere near what Cattle claims, this will cement their lead as the number one supplier of EV batteries in the world. Other inputs for EV batteries, like graphite and rare earth elements, are sourced and refined almost exclusively within China, further emphasizing the PRC's control of the battery supply chain. While batteries are important for dominating the EV industry, they're not enough. EV cars are still cars and require a massive amount of expertise in manufacturing and design that the Chinese initially lacked. Realizing this, China went on a spree of strategic technology acquisitions. First, in 2010, Chinese automotive giant Geely acquired Swedish automaker Volvo Cars from Ford Motor Company. This provided Geely with access to Volvo's advanced automotive technology and safety features, which have been integrated into Geely's own EV lineup. Additionally, Volvo has accelerated its own transition to electric vehicles under Geely's ownership and gave Chinese companies access to foreign markets under an established brand name. Then, in 2014, Chinese auto parts manufacturer Wanxian Group acquired the bankrupt American electric car manufacturer Fisker Automotive. The acquisition allowed them to gain access to Fisker's electric vehicle technology and revive the brand as Karma Automotive, which now produces luxury electric vehicles. Then again in 2018, Geely acquired a 9.7% stake in German automaker Daimler, becoming its largest shareholder. This strategic investment has allowed Geely to forge a partnership with Daimler, benefiting from the German automaker's expertise in EV technology and luxury vehicles. The SAIC GM Wuling Automobile Joint Venture, a collaboration between Chinese automaker SAIC Motor, American automaker General Motors, and Chinese firm Wuling Motors, has successfully developed popular models like the Wuling Hongguang Mini EV, one of China's top-selling electric vehicles. Chinese EV manufacturers are also known to recruit international experts to enhance their design and engineering capabilities. For instance, in 2016, BYD hired former Audi chief designer Wolfgang Egger to lead their design center, aiming to refine their design language and boost their global image. Highways, an emerging Chinese EV startup, appointed Ken Okuyama, a distinguished Japanese designer with experience at Pininfarina, Ferrari and Porsche, as their chief design advisor. To further develop their technical expertise, China has imposed requirements on foreign firms entering the market, such as localization, which mandates a specific percentage of each vehicle's components to be sourced from Chinese suppliers. Joint venture requirements have also been implemented, 
Alongside these strategies, China has faced accusations of intellectual property theft, including a high-profile case involving a former Tesla engineer accused of stealing autopilot source code before joining Xpeng Motors. China has made efforts to address concerns regarding forced technology transfers. For instance, the 2020 foreign investment law bans forced technology transfers and enhances intellectual property protection for foreign investors. While these past strategies have undoubtedly contributed to the growth of China's domestic EV industry, the increased protections of intellectual property indicates a confidence in their acquired knowledge from foreign sources. China has also emphasized technologies that assist in manufacturing. In 2016, the Chinese media group acquired QK, a leading German manufacturer of industrial robots for the automotive sector. Furthermore, the Chinese government has promoted the production, consumption, and supporting infrastructure for electric vehicles. Since 2009, it has offered direct purchase subsidies and tax incentives for EVs, leading to substantial savings per vehicle. Local governments across China have also introduced incentives to encourage EV adoption. These include free or discounted license plates, which hold value in cities with license plate restrictions or lotteries. EV users also benefit from reduced parking fees, access to priority lanes during peak hours, and exemptions from driving restrictions based on license plate numbers. China's government has introduced a dual credit system to ensure automakers support the growth of the EV industry. This policy requires a minimum number of new energy vehicles to be produced, determined by a company's overall production volume and fuel efficiency performance. By mandating a certain percentage of EV production, the government encourages manufacturers to invest in EV technology R&D and expand their EV offerings. This has led to a significant increase in electric vehicle models available in China. A strong charging infrastructure is vital for promoting EV adoption. China's government has heavily invested in developing and deploying EV charging stations nationwide. With a goal of over 1 million public charging stations by 2030, China aims to create a comprehensive network that alleviates range anxiety and makes long-distance EV travel more feasible. This extensive charging infrastructure helps address consumer concerns about the practicality of electric vehicles, further encouraging EV adoption in China. Investments are being made in urban and rural charging infrastructure, targeting key areas like shopping centers, public transportation hubs, and tourist destinations to ensure optimal coverage and accessibility. This extensive charging network provides EV users with the convenience and confidence needed to transition from traditional vehicles. China has also implemented unified charging standards, allowing drivers to use any public charging station, regardless of their vehicle's brand or manufacturer. Additionally, China promotes the adoption of international charging protocols like CHAdeMO and CCS, ensuring compatibility with global standards and encouraging worldwide EV adoption. The Chinese government also has streamlined the permitting process for installing charging stations in residential and commercial properties, reducing bureaucratic obstacles and accelerating charging infrastructure deployment. This simplification makes it easier for EV users to charge their vehicles at home or work. China also incorporates EV charging infrastructure into its broader smart city initiatives, utilizing advanced technologies like IoT, big data, and artificial intelligence for real-time monitoring and dynamic management of charging stations. This optimizes energy consumption and reduces strain on the power grid ensuring a more sustainable charging infrastructure. Shenzhen, a major tech hub in China, is an excellent example of these successful strategies. In 2018, the city became the world's first to fully electrify its public bus fleet, boasting over 16,000 electric buses. This achievement was due to local government support, offering subsidies and incentives for bus operators to trade in older diesel-powered buses for electric ones. The switch to electric buses not only reduced greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution, but also lowered operating costs and noise pollution. In recent years, the city set ambitious goals to transition all taxis to electric models. By 2020, over 99% of Shenzhen's taxis were electric, totaling more than 20,000 electric taxis on the road. The government supported this transition by offering financial incentives to taxi drivers who chose electric vehicles and by expanding the charging infrastructure to accommodate the growing number of electric taxis. Once a small fishing village, Shenzhen now leads the way in expanding EV infrastructure, 
serving as a model for other cities in China and around the world. China's success in the electric vehicle industry is truly impressive, but their dominance is not guaranteed. The United States has started to follow China's lead by offering government support for their renewables industry with the Inflation Reduction Act, and Europe is likely to do the same. America and Europe also lead in venture capital investments in electric trucks, battery recycling and other areas of innovation important to the EV industry. Japan and Korea have also been leading the way in research and development into hydrogen vehicles, which may make more sense in the long term if battery shortages limit the amount of automobiles that can be fully electrified. China is also relatively new to direct consumer sales, as most of their industrial growth has been either as a supplier or through joint ventures with Western firms. To excel in the export market, China must not only excel in production and technological innovation, but also in marketing and customer service while addressing the lingering perception that Chinese products are associated with low cost and inferior quality engineering. Cars are the most expensive and frequently used manufactured products that most people will buy in a lifetime. And because of this, consumers will demand reliability, safety and quality from their vehicles. Building trust with consumers may seem like a daunting task for China, but other countries have managed to change the world's perception of their manufactured goods relatively quickly. It may surprise many to hear that the saying, on the fritz, which is used to describe a machine malfunctioning, comes from a time when German products were considered poor quality and prone to breaking. Today, the phrase German engineering is synonymous with quality. For better or worse, reputations do change, and they can change quickly. While the US and the EU can use protectionist measures to safeguard their market share at home, China might become the major auto manufacturer for Latin America, Africa and the Middle East, just as they did with mobile phones. The success of Japanese and German automakers gave both countries a lasting reputation for engineering excellence. If Chinese automobile companies achieve a similar triumph, we're likely to see a similar effect where there is increased interest in purchasing other capital-intensive complex machines from China, such as airplanes and industrial machinery. Every car on the road with the badge of a Chinese brand will be an advertisement for the country's industrial prowess. That being said, things are not perfect on China's side. Their success in battery manufacturing has come at the cost of environmental degradation, both at home and abroad. Their cars are still being powered by mostly coal-generated electricity, despite their recent investments into solar and wind energy. The large amount of batteries they've manufactured will need to be disposed of, posing additional environmental risk and the cost of the EVs are extremely sensitive to commodity prices, which very well may increase as other countries attempt to move over to EVs. Traditional automakers, along with their respective governments, need to step up and match China's efforts to increase their manufacturing capacity and export their new energy vehicles worldwide. Ultimately, this challenge from China might be good for customers all around the globe. After all, competition is a process, not an outcome. It is the pursuit of excellence, not the absence of failure. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Meridian Mindset. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below to support our channel. We'd also love to hear your thoughts on the topic, so please leave a comment and join the conversation.